Daniel Kalenda joins us now via Skype. Daniel, welcome to the show. Thanks, Terry. Good to be with you. You wrote this book as someone who has experienced spiritual warfare. Will you share with us the story about the witch doctor in West Africa? Yeah, you know, it's it's important what you said because this book was not written from a marble writing desk in a university classroom. This comes from the field. Of course, I am an evangelist, and I, I spend most of my time in the third world preaching the gospel in Africa, in Asia, all over the place. And one of the stories that I tell in detail in the book is the story of a witch doctor that came to one of our meetings in Nigeria. And uh, this lady was actually famous in the region because when she would put a curse on people, they would die. So she was bad even by the standards of the witch doctors in that region. And I heard this, by the way, firsthand from pastors that, that knew this woman and knew people that had died when they came under her curse. And this lady came to one of the events to put a curse on me and kill me because what you have to understand is that when we come to these regions, we take authority over those demonic spirits. We break their power in Jesus' name. We confront them without fear and without hesitation. And many of these uh, witch doctors go bankrupt as a result of our gospel campaign. So this lady, as many witch doctors across Africa, she did not like us very much. She came to that meeting to put a curse on me. I was preaching about the blood of Jesus, which had to have been uh, divine genius. And as I'm preaching, this woman is off to my right-hand side with her fetishes, her amulets, what we call it juju. I really don't know very much about it, but I know that they use it when they perform their rituals. And she was getting ready to hurl this curse at me while I was preaching. And all of a sudden, I heard from my right-hand side, I heard this blood-curdling scream. And that's when I became aware of her presence. And I looked, and off to my right-hand side, there was this woman on the ground, writhing like a snake, foaming at the, at the mouth, white foam coming out of her, her mouth. And I just ignored her and kept preaching because there was about half a million people standing in front of me that night. I wasn't about to give the devil my time or my platform. I kept preaching the gospel, but we had trained some of these local pastors in exactly how to deal with this situation. So they grabbed her and they pulled her out back to a tent that we have set up behind the platform. We call it the snake pit. They cast those demons out of her. She received Jesus as her savior. And then they brought her to me on the platform. And she said to me, standing there on the platform, she said, I came here tonight to kill you. And I thought, well, it's nice to meet you too. It was the warmest <laughs> introduction I'd ever had. She said, I came here tonight to kill you, but instead I have given my life to Jesus because tonight I have seen that your Jesus is more powerful than my witchcraft. And this is just one example wow. of something that we've seen played out over and over and over throughout Africa. We've seen the witch doctors get saved. We've seen them become preachers of the gospel. I had in one crusade just recently, uh, a witch doctor came with a pickup truck full of idols and amulets and fetishes. And we burned those things right there on the field. And he gave his life to Jesus and said, I will never worship the devil again. Daniel, the scripture is full of commentary about angels and demons, stories uh, about Jesus confronting them in his day and time. Why do you think there are so many in the church today who seem um, to have a lack of knowledge about this and to even feel uncomfortable with it? Well, you know, one of the chapters in the book I call the zeitgeist, and, and zeitgeist is a German word that's kind of come into English, and the literal translation is the time spirit, or maybe more accurately, the spirit of the age, which is what we read about in the Bible. And what we discover is that there are these competing systems of thought in the world. The one system is the system that we get from the scriptures, and we get from God, and we understand from what's revealed to us in the Bible. The other system is what is being foisted upon us by the world and by the spirit of the age. And in the Western world, one of the zeitgeist issues that we have to deal with is that we live in a very materialistic uh, culture, which has basically relegated everything supernatural to fantasy. It, it, it's, it's something that is associated with a Harry Potter novel or some kind of television uh, special. It's not something that most people in the Western world consider to be reality. And yet, the Bible says that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. The Bible presents a worldview in which the real battle and the real struggle and the greater reality is actually the one that we can't see. Unfortunately, many Christians have adopted the zeitgeist of the world, which has caused them to look at these things skeptically. But what we need to realize it, the Bible says in 2 Corinthians that we are not ignorant of the devil's schemes or devices because we don't want to give him an advantage over us. 
And this is really important. If we don't understand how the devil operates, and if we don't believe that the devil does operate, then what we've done is we've given him a strategic tactical advantage in our lives. And it's no wonder that so many Christians with that, that worldview are living lives of defeat. So what are some practical steps we can take, Daniel, to defeat the enemy? Well, you know, in this book, I, I go all the way through the theology of angels and demons. I talk about spiritual warfare in the broadest context, contexts, like I just mentioned to you, like in a crusade field in Africa. I even have a whole chapter in there about how to cast out demons. But actually, what I'm really focusing on through most of the book is how people can get victory over the dragons in their own lives. Because here's what I've discovered, that for the average Christian, for most of us, the real battle is fought between the ears. It's the battlefield of the mind. This is where the enemy really seeks to get authority and control in our lives. And right now, you know, we're in the midst of this a coronavirus epidemic, this crisis, and we're seeing this playing out all around us right now because even in the church world, you see very much the same reactions that people don't know the Lord are having. They're paralyzed by fear and anxiety. They're crippled by these things. But the Bible says that God has not given us a spirit of fear but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So when we learn to recognize the attacks of the enemy, we embrace God's way of thinking and we're able to cast down those imaginations that exalt themselves against the, the knowledge of Christ. That is the very first step in, in winning those spiritual battles in our lives. Well, the book is timely, Daniel. It's called Slaying Dragons, A Practical Guide to Spiritual Warfare. It's available right now wherever books are sold. Daniel Kalenda, thank you so much. Great to have you with us today. Thank you, Terry. God bless you. You too.